Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. Welcome to Next Level Charting. Thank you very much for joining us. So today I want to show you how we've been pretty much everywhere and nowhere since January 2018. In fact, the average stock is down over the last two plus years. We'll look at the danger zones for SPY, RSI, and the percent above the 20-day EMA. And then we're going to look at KRE, IWM, and some equal weight sectors. So let's start off with a long-term chart of the S&P 500, SPDR, SPY, and check out the long-term trend, or should I say lack of the long-term trend, because the S&P 500 has been nowhere in over two years. Here is the January 2018 high, and if I take a line straight across, you can see we hit that high last week, and we're just below it with a little bit of weakness so far this week. And so to get from nowhere, basically, to go from unchanged over a two-plus year period, we went down 12%, up 16%, down 21%, up 45%, down 35% and up 32%. So in order to profit in this market, buy and hold wouldn't have worked. You'd be flat buy and hold. Uh, you might have lost some hair or have an upset stomach from the ride. Uh, but you know the only way to have profited would have been to play the swings. Now, you know, truth be told, there, there was an uptrend up until the summer, fall of 2018. And we had that first breakdown in October. And you can see RSI. I've got the bull and the bear ranges here. This is weekly RSI, 14 periods. And typically, you know, the momentum bull range is from 40 to 80 or so. And you can see it held that 40 to 80 zone throughout most of 2016, all of 2017, and most of 2018. And then it moved below 40. And that was kind of like a shift in momentum. And that meant you had now bearish momentum. And if we look up here, you can see that was in the middle part of October. So you stayed bearish for a few months. And then we got above 60 in mid-March and moved into bullish momentum here. So we stayed bullish momentum until the latter part of February. When we moved below 40. So right with this break of the 200-day, sorry, the 40-week moving average, which, you know, is the equivalent of the 200-day. So you had the break below the 40-week. You had the RSI breaking out of its bull range and moving into a bear range at the end of February. So you could have been on the sidelines at the end of February, beginning of March, and not had to endure this decline here. And, of course, you would have missed this advance here, but we're still below this breakdown point. And that's, I think, the main point here is that we've had a breakdown. We've had, it's like pulling a rubber band. You're pulling, you're pulling, you're pulling. And as you pull that rubber band, it gets more and more stretched. And finally, you let go. And the further it's pulled back, the further stretched it is, the bigger it's going to bounce. And I think that's what we've had right now. Now, if you think the S&P 500 has had a hard time, why do you dig down a little bit deeper? Now, this next chart shows the equal weight S&P 500. RSP is the symbol there. Weekly chart going back to the middle of 2016. There's that January 2008 high. We're not even close to it. S&P 500 got all the way back to that high. RSP did not. So it's down. If you did a... 27-month rate of change, RSP would be down. Nothing to show for over two years of growth, progress, whatever you want to call it. There's no growth in that stock index ETF. If you look at the mid-cap ETF MDY, it is also well below that January. You know, even when it was hitting a new high here in January, February 2020, it was just above that January 2018 high. So not much going on in mid-caps either. It's been a large-cap world. And there's the breakdown and the bounce. And then IWM has performed the worst of all. 
you can see there's the breakdown, 52-week low, and it hasn't even gotten back above that January or December 2018 low there. So small caps continue to perform the worst. So on that first SPY chart, I showed the wild swings that we've had over the last 27 months. And we're currently seeing two of these swings right now, and they're in very short periods of time. Here's the downswing, 30 plus percent, and then the bounce. And according to Dow theory, you know, you break down and you have the first leg down of a bear market. This is the primary trend. So I think the primary trend is down. And Charles Dow theorized that you do get secondary bounces or bear market bounces in a primary downtrend or in a bear market. And that first bear market bounce is often very sharp and it emboldens the bulls because it brings hope back to the market. But we got to look at where SPY is. It's below its falling 200-day moving average. It hit a 52-week low in March. And so if I work under the assumption that this is a bear market, the beginning of a bear market, then the assumption here is that this is a counter trend bounce, a secondary bounce, and it would be a corrective wave in Elliott wave terms. I don't use Elliott wave very much, but I think there's an Elliott pattern possibly at work here, and that would be an A, B, C correction. This is a zigzag correction. If you go back and you read your R in Elliott, you will see it in there, and it is retraced 50 to 62%. And I've been watching this. So we got to the caution zone. And we got to the 38 to 50% retracement. And we got above the 50% and into the danger zone last week. And then we fell back this week. But the market is all over the place. I mean, the number of gaps above 1% is unprecedented over the last two months. It's crazy how the market is gapping up and gapping down on the open. I really think it's a market to be on the sidelines because of the volatility and because I think you're below the falling 200-day moving average. And bad things happen below falling 200-day moving averages. Good things happen above rising 200-day moving averages. Sure, you're going to get a reversal at some point, but right now when you're below the falling 200-day and you've hit a 52-week low and you're up you know, 28%, that's a danger zone, all right? You're in danger of a pullback, and I don't think it's a place to chase the market. And you can see I've got an RSI danger zone here. So in a bull market, you know, the 40 to, uh, the 30 to 40, sorry, the, yeah, we'll go 30 to 50 zone here. It's kind of an area you expect to bounce. Well, on the opposite side, the 50 to 70 zone is a danger zone for momentum. It's where you expect momentum to fail and turn down. And then this indicator here is a percentage of stocks above the 20-day EMA. And you can see it got above 90% the first week of April. And then on that second push, it barely got above 80% when SBY was hitting a new high. So that's a little divergence and a downturn. So this uh, bounce, counter-turn bounce is looking shaky right now. And it looks like it could be poised in. Now, there's a big caveat out there. Actually, there's two big caveats out there. First of all, the Fed is going to do everything it can to fight the bear, the bear market in stocks. We've already seen what it's done in the bond market. So you've got the Fed coming in in a big way. And the second is fiscal policy is going to come in in a big way. So those two things make it a very dangerous environment. You're in a bear market, you're below the falling 200-day, but the Fed and fiscal policy are fighting it. So that's where we get this choppy trading range. Now, banks and small caps are a big issue right now for the stock market because they are both lagging. Sure, we got big techs leading. You look at uh, Electronic Arts and Microsoft and Adobe and some of these have had big rallies and the biotechs have rallied. 
But if you dig down and you look at regional banks and small caps, they're still not performing that well. Uh, look at KRE, and it just got hit really hard there in February, March. It has bounced, but look at that hit it took the prior week. It's trying to firm up this week, but you know if it breaks down below 30, that's going to signal a continuation lower, and that would be bearish. If we look at IWM, we have this initial impulse move lower, and now we have what looks like a corrective move higher. And if we break support there, that green line, then that would be bearish and signal a continuation lower. Now, you always got to look at the other side, all right? What is the, what is the other side of the trade C? Because if you're going to sell short or you're going to sell, there's going to be a buyer on the other side thinking the opposite. And so the shorter term thing, I think that's all we can do is very short term or very long term because very long term, you know, we're below the falling 200-day moving average. So that's bearish. Short term, we do have this big surge and we have some sort of a choppy consolidation. You know, look at this, a gap down, a gap up, a decline, a gap up. I mean, it's really choppy. But, you know, maybe if we get a breakout there, you know, that would put small caps back up towards maybe that 50%. But that's very short-term speculation. And any kind of short-term speculation requires watching during the day. I think overall this market is just way too noisy and volatile for mere mortals, should I say. So I think if we want to get a handle on the broader market, we need to look at the equal weight sectors instead of the sector SBDRs. The sector SBDRs are weighted by the large cap stocks in those sectors. So in technology, the big techs, of course, dominate. In healthcare, the big healthcare stocks dominate. In XLY, Amazon dominates. And so if we look at the equal weight sectors, we can get a better idea of how the average stock in that sector is doing. And what I'm seeing is technology is performing okay, but it's still a bear market bounce. I mean, there's that big decline, and you got two steps down, and you got basically one step back up to the 50% retracement with a rising wedge, and you're vulnerable to a wedge break and a continuation lower. So technology, even though it's performing well, is still in a bear market bounce. Healthcare looks better because you can see it had the big move down as well, but it got above that 50% retracement, and it continued above the 200-day. So it is the leader right now. But probably more concerning would be what's happening in three key sectors, consumer discretionary, finance, and industrials. You can see that consumer discretionary didn't even make it to the 38% retracement. That's a very weak retracement, the weakest of the group, and it's stalling out. Finance got just above that 38% retracement, but it peaked the week before and is starting to show some short-term relative weakness, and it could be ready to break a little flag wedge. And industrials also got barely above that 38% retracement and has peaked the week, a week and a half ago, so it's already starting to weaken. And this could be a bearish wedge that is in the process of breaking. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.